Um, speakers are Ben and Larry. They will be talking about Sonic-based network infrastructure. Uh, please go ahead and introduce yourself. All Thank right. you. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Larry. I'm from uh, Edge Core Networks. And in this presentation, I'm going to co-host it together with Ben. And Ben is from uh, Avis Network. Uh, ben, you want to introduce yourself? Hi, everybody. Ben from Avis. Looking forward to talking with you today. OK. So in this particular talk, I know there's a lot of subjects on uh, Sonic this afternoon. We just heard uh, previously a couple of them. In this, this particular one, we want to focus on deployment challenges, migrations, and what are some of the best practices. Um, Sonic is nice, has a lot of um, interest, but what are some of the challenges when it comes to actually deploying it, and how do we overcome that, and some of the practice. That's what we're going to be focusing on. So I'll start kicking off. Uh, this slide, I probably, I was very tempted to just skip it. Um, but I don't think there's anyone that's going to be arguing about here. But I want to call out a couple of things that is really key. Because over the last two years, I have talked to many, many countless number of uh, uh, end users, operators, who are interested in Sonic. They come from the background of really familiar with Sonic versus uh, really just heard about it, but don't know what it is, and want to know about it. So it's a wide range of customers, but there are a couple of things that always shows up in the first meeting when we talk to them about Sonic, about their interest in Sonic. One, supply chain. This is a question that is almost always these days uh, an age, not just in, uh, in Sonic, but in any kind of IT infrastructure deployment. Um, this become a buzzword that end users, operators, are always interested in supply chain. And therefore, Sonic provided the opportunity of not locking into a single vendor. And this is a very key thing. Many of the customers that we talk to wants to make sure that they do not lock in, whether it's ASIC vendors, switch vendors, and then with Sonic being the open source software, they don't, lock, they don't want to be locked in at the, at the software level either. The other one is TCO. This is primarily the interest. In these days of macro uh, the economies that we are facing in, a lot of corporate are facing challenge on CapEx spending. So they're looking for alternative solutions for their, um, their um, uh, deployment, the networking, when it's come time to refresh in a data center. They're looking for alternative that will bring them much lower TCO than they are currently spending. This is one of the reasons why they talk to vendors like Edgecore, but also other vendors that is supplying uh, Sonic, Sonic distribution, as well as the hardware uh, for, um, for, um, for the data center in order to see if they can actually get lower TCO. Uh, one of the customer that actually is deployed, I don't have their permission to actually talk about the name. They're very vocal about adopting community-based Sonic and uh, data sharing, just a data point just a single data point, they are saying that it's uh, 3x savings for them, 70% savings for, their, uh, for the same uh, networking stack solutions that they are deploying now with a community-based Sonic and uh, multi-vendors, hardware vendors support. And so these are the two things I want to call out. The rest of the, uh, the uh, benefits, it's well-documented. So, so they like Sonic. They're looking at the TCO, they say it's good. It's good. Supply chain, yes, it, it's a problem that they don't have to be locked into a vendor. So what are some of the challenges when it comes to deploying? Keep in mind that almost all these operators and users, it's a brownfield deployment. They currently have some networking supplier from the classic suppliers. So they're used to enterprise quality. So what does Sonic do? Um, the community is doing a very good job of you know, doing functional testing in some of the test cases, really requiring all the PRs, all the features to submit together with test cases. But what's perhaps lacking, and, and, uh, and to no fault of the community, um, is there are deployment qu level quality, scalability as an example, that needs to be further tested. So could there be any other testing options for the operators that are interested in deploying Sonic that is more specific, test that is more specific to their use cases, to their actual deployment use cases. That's what they want. They want to be, have the ability to find a supplier that say, this is my topology, this is my use case, these are the protocols I use, and this is how I scale, and I'm using Sonic for this part of my production environment. 
How would I test it? This is a key part of what they ask. And then, of course, the support on 24 by 7, it's all with an SLA. This is not something the community can provide. So they're looking for vendors that can provide them with an SLA. So deployment, getting back to day zero. When I am coming from a, an existing, um, whether it's an operating system or a stack, a networking stack, how do you help me to migrate into Sonic? Without naming names, I can name names, but I don't want to name the, the, the incumbent names, but you guys know what some of those names are. So how do I help them? How can we provide a solution to offer them? And also keep in mind, Sonic transitioning and going into Sonic, it's a transition. I don't recall any vendors will come in and say from day one that they adopt Sonic, 100% of their production environment all of a sudden will switch to Sonic. Never happened, hasn't happened yet. So it's a journey for them. So therefore, during this transition time, they will have the incumbent stack in their uh, environment. And then they will have Sonic coming up. And more importantly, they may even have multiple Sonic stacks that's, that's in there that they're trying to bring. Remember, no vendor locks in. This is very key to many of the end users. They do not want to lock into one particular Sonic supplier. They want multiple Sonic stacks. So. How do you help them to provision during this journey to make sure that they are as painless as possible to be able to go through this, all right? And then to do that, they all have their existing NMS or network management, whatever that, that tools that inside the shop that they are used to doing. How can Sonic fit in and adopt it with the required APIs that will help them to do that? And so lastly, but not least, the hybrid cloud environment. Many of them run their on-premise data shops but tie their applications and tie to accessing some part in the public cloud. So this is also an environment that they want to deploy Sonic under. So how do we help them? These are the requirements that we heard over and over again from many of the customers that we talked to. So, so here are some of the tips that we have done. Um, jointly, Edge Core with Avis partnering it and trying to address some of these uh, uh, challenges or the requirements. Uh, more importantly, I want to call out the one center in this particular slide. This is an official OCP experience center, okay? As one center was recently announced, it is a sonic specific experience center in which operators or end users who are curious about sonic and want to try it out they need a place to go and try it out with real hardware. Not VMs, but real hardware because they, they don't deploy on VMs, they deploy on real hardware. They want to have real hardware they can access and run the protocols and try it out and run through some of their, maybe their own specific use case and testing and see how it works. Um, I think Ben will talk about it a little bit more. Uh, we can go in, any users, anyone, anyone can go in and try it out. It has not just Edge Core hardware, as much as I like to advertise for Edge Core hardware, I have to say, this is a Sonic game. The Sonic game is multiple hardware vendors. This is what makes Sonic popular, all right? And the one center has um, hardware switches from, I think six, is that right? Seven. Seven, it's growing, continuing, seven hardware vendors the switches, over 100 switches in there, all kinds of sizes and, and, uh, uh, and speed. All right, so that's one thing that we have, we have addressed. The other thing that we have addressed is uh, with FTOS. FTOS stands for Fabric Test Automation Suite. This is the part that I talk about creating specific tests, automated tests that are specific to a, an end user's deployment environment. These tests, once it's deployed, it can tie back into the vendor that is supplying the stack and be part of the vendor's CICD process and be able to automate for, for continuous delivery of uh, upcoming Sonic releases and also the hardware ref. You can test this with these so that give the, the users the confidence that every drop that you go in and deploy it into the user environment is actually tested, pre-tested with their specific tests for the users. And of course, the 
multi-vendors, normalized net apps is, is extremely important. This is the part about customers wanting to deploy multiple Sonic stacks, not just from one ASIC vendor or switch vendor, but multiple Sonic stacks. That's what they want. We hear it all over again, time and again. Why? It ties to supply chain. It ties to no vendor lock-in. That's what I talked earlier. So when they want this, they need a controller or a networking management layer of software that can work simultaneously with concurrently with all these Sonic stacks. And also, because of the migration that I talked about earlier, it's a process, it's a transition time. It also works with existing. And Ben is gonna talk about their ONCE controller and how this actually would, uh, would normalize it and support it. With a vendor neutral like Avis that can, uh, a supplier that can manage the support requirements across all the hardware and software stacks. This is a ease of burden, ease of use for supportability. Very, very important for users to adopt Sonic. Our Edge Core, of course, our, has been a champion of Sonic for a long time. We started submitting our first switch, mm -hmm. believe it or not, in 2016. So this was way before Sonic becomes com uh, uh, popular. And we continue to do that today. We have switches that actually support uh, Sonic and enabled on Sonic from 1G all the way to 400G. It can be deployed from management switch, which is a very common approach for customers interested in Sonic. They, they will start with management switch before they put them in the real production uh, uh, leaf and spine. Okay. All right. Thanks, Larry. Okay, so Larry mentioned FTAS, uh, Fabric Test Automation Suite. And what we essentially do with Edge Core and all the different vendors is we provide a certified Sonic solution, right? We make sure that it is ready for deployment with our CI CD. Uh, and then on top of that, uh, we put that Sonic stack, I think this is the laser, ones for management. And it's really uh, the APIs that, that plug in and make it all coalesce with all the rest of your existing tools, which you know gives that, that customer, yourself, or your network admin, the capability to, to run this new stack uh, that is multi-vendor and more complex uh, easily, right? And it's our support that has the experience with customers over the years who have gone before you uh, we have case studies with uh, uh, basically every industry at this point that have really pushed forward in their cloud operations and their, excuse me, their hybrid cloud operations and expanding into open source networking. Uh, so you'll be able to see that on our website. We've got some great case studies there. But basically they're able to take this, these tools, FTAS and ONES and our support and do next level networking where they're no longer locked in, uh, they're no longer subject to the supply chain issues, chip shortages, uh, you know, pandemics, anything, right? <laughs> they, they now have control again. Uh, so what does that stack look like? So when we say any ASIC, any switch, any NAS, we mean it. Uh, you can see in our one center, you can see in our FTAS lab, you can see on the diagram right here, literally any ASIC, any switch, and any NAS. So whether that's community Sonic, whether that's a vendor specific Sonic, like Edge Core Sonic, uh, or another Sonic, it, it really doesn't matter. Because of the containerized nature of Sonic, we're able to, to leverage that and give you the ability to have orchestration visibility, and support across all of it. Uh, the data is all harmonized so that you have able to draw that telemetry and have over 200 metrics. Uh, we literally have an enormous, <laughs> enormous uh, list of every single thing that you can draw from every single ASIC, and we draw it all for you and give you all that data. So you can look at it from a very high level, or you can look at it down to the very most granular detail. Uh, so I would encourage you to uh, explore Sonic if you haven't already. 
I would encourage you to take a look at all the different options out there. Uh, and because I share the stage today with Larry, I would highly encourage you to, to check out EdgeCore uh, and all of their sonic solutions with us. And you can do that right there. So to conclude our talk, what we're really saying here is if you want to go sonic and you want to be successful, there's a recipe, right, that we've learned from the hyperscalers and we replicate in enterprise. We've done for many customers at this point that you really have to start with a, a support that is SLA backed, right? If you're playing the name game, the blame game, and everybody's pointing fingers, and you haven't the tools and capability to really identify what the real problem is in a single throat to choke, and that isn't backed by SLAs with the, the vendors, then you're gonna have troubles with your support. But when you've got SLAs, you can guarantee that that support's gonna really come through for you. Uh, you need a network stack that's going to perform across all of the different various vendors that's going to give you the visibility to really see what's happening in your network and give you the ability to manage it well. And then you need APIs to be able to plug into your existing tools and go with uh, a nice, seamless, integrated solution. And so to, to wrap it all up, basically, is you don't need products, you don't need services, you need solutions. You need the whole thing packaged up well, tightly proven, tested, tried, and true. And you can experience that at the OCP Experience Center called the One Center. Thank you so much. Thank you, Larry. Thank you, Ben. Um, and for questions, do you have any? Larry? Any questions? All right. Well, thank you so much.